welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada, and our summer of videos continues. Uh, first off, I'm going to show you our Hilltop Pillbox water bottle that we got at the recent Global War tournament, Global War 36 tournament up in Prince George, courtesy of Sky Marshall and Historical Board Gaming. I was fortunate enough to play the Japanese, so I got a beautiful, is a metal uh, water bottle, very cool, and uh, going to enjoy that for years to come. We also have our Stanley tape measure, Stanley, not a sponsor. Well, that sucks. Uh, but they are, uh, unbeknownst to them, they are helping me with this game because as you know, when I play War at Sea, uh, I do not use the maps with all the squares on them. I use a measuring system. But here we have my version of the Battle of Midway. Now I say my version because I don't have every single ship uh, that was involved because that would be literally hundreds of ships and hundreds and hundreds of planes uh, which I simply do not have but we're gonna have some fun anyway and although we know about the four carriers being sunk there were many many other ships that were involved they just never shot at each other because well the planes did all the work so we'll start with the Japanese we have for the Japanese we have a grand total of 525 points. Now that's a lot of points for a game of war at sea. Typically you're between 100 and 200. Sometimes you go as high as 300, but we're doing 525. We've got four Zeeks out there. We've got four Vals and four Kates for a dozen fighters and dive bombers and torpedo bombers. Over here we have four of the Kenai Maru transport vessels. These are the ones that we're bringing the uh, Japanese troops that were going to land ashore at Midway and take the island over. Unfortunately for the Japanese, uh, these boys had to actually just turn around and go home because, of course, they lost the Battle of Midway and had no air cover. The ships that are coming are as follows. We have the old battleship Yamashiro. We have the Soryu carrier and I am giving them four wings of aircraft. I'm doing the same thing with the American carriers just to get more stuff in the game. Uh, the Kirishima is another battleship. Nice looking boat there. We have the Akagi. And remember, I don't have all the, all the different uh, boats that were in the battle, so I'm using some different ones if need be. The Yamato is there, of course. Got to have the Yamato. The Zuikaku, old carrier there. Really nice. The Musashi, the sister ship of the Yamato. And then we have the Shokaku. And we have two more. We have the Congo, it's a battleship. And the Miyoko, just a cruiser. All right, now we're gonna show you how this goes because of course with all the air power, a lot of these boats might not even make it to the front. We're gonna tell you about this. Here's the island of Midway. And for the Americans, we're going to start out, we've got a Catalina out there, scoping around, seeing what's going on. Uh, we've got Helldivers. Actually, we've got one Helldiver, because that's all I've got. <laughs> we've got a couple of Mitchells, land-based Mitchells that are going to be there, taking off and doing their thing from Midway. We have Avengers. I believe we have four Avengers, or two Avengers. Two Avengers. We do have five Devastators. The torpedo bombers are going to be great. We have the Dauntless. Yes, we've got some Dauntless out there. Um, our Dauntless dive bombers. We've got one, two, three. We've got four wings of Dauntlesses. The F-4 Wildcats. That's the fighter they're using going up against the Zeros. So that's going to be fun. And there are one, two, three... Looks to be four of those out there. And then we've got one Avenger uh, going to do its thing as a torpedo bomber. Hopefully it does not get shot down. The Helldiver and the torpedo bombers will be very, very, very important. As well as the Avengers, of course. Um, but the Helldivers, uh, they, they're dropping 11. And uh, they get extra an extra die when they attack a wounded boat. Here are the American ships, and these, I believe, were on the order of battle, but again, the surface ships, ships never really shot at each other because the airplanes uh, made that, uh, it made it all too apparent that you're just going to lose your boat if you get out there too far. 
So we've got the Atlanta, nice cruiser. Got the Tennessee, battleship. We've got uh, the big Iowa, boom. Gonna have some fun. Got the Enterprise. We've got the Mighty Mo. There she is, 73 points. That's a big boat. We got the Yorktown. We've got the Washington. And the Boise finishes everybody off here. So that is the American fleet. The American fleet is 503 points. So it's 525 to 503. And the goal of the Japanese is to get these boats all the way across to Midway. Now, you could say, well, that's, that's easy. You just send every single plane you got at these boats to wipe them out. But that's not what's going to happen because the Japanese definitely needed to clear a road. So these boats are not going to be allowed to start from the end here. Okay, and They only move a speed of one, so that's only four inches. That's about the length of the boats themselves. They're only going to be allowed to move once... <laughs> So if any one of them does make it, the Americans will lose. So that's how I've set it up here, and I'm hoping, hoping it'll be a, a, an exciting affair. Uh, time will tell, though. We have green dice for the Americans. We've got the red dice for the Japanese. There's Chessex dice here, and boy, it's, this is going to be uh, fun to keep care of uh, as a solo game. There's a lot going on. There's lots of little uh, notes on each of the cards, but I'm going to do my dangdest, and we'll see. Will the Americans succeed again? Will they be able to sink four carriers before the Japanese can get to Midway? Stay tuned, folks, and we'll see if Midway will hold. All right, we are free. Yes, we are. That's right, we're free falling. Thanks, Tom Petty. The late, great Tom Petty, one of my favorites. Well, here we have the dead, the late planes from this game. We lost for the Americans, the Catalina, and a Devastator, and the Japanese lost a Val dive bomber. So that's what got destroyed this round. Well, what happened to the boats? Well, we took one hit on the Kirishima. That was it. We basically flooded the air here and here, and some here against the Yamato, and nothing got through except for one hit against the armor. And same with the Japanese. Completely overloaded here, and none of these planes got shot down. I actually put three fighters against their dive bombers and uh, the fighters all missed and then the dive bombers all missed so the Atlanta lives on but the Tennessee took one hit so that's unfortunate and uh, we are it was fortunate you have to roll a two or less to keep it moving uh, or two or more pardon me and if it rolls a two or less it goes only one and that's the same over here with the Yamashiro and there's a couple of ships like that that are slow so, makes a big map like this a little difficult to, to stay up and give air protection from. But that's round one. So we've got our first casualties, a couple of small dents in the boats, but we'll see how we do. Next round, here they go. No, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. And yes, these are all dust in the wind. Yes, it was a very rough time for the Japanese in the air and for the Americans in the water and we'll show you what happened we really overloaded uh, the Atlanta and it took damage from the first two ships it took bomb damage from a dive bomber and then it took torpedo damage which sank it it only has three hull points but because I had tasked a whole bunch of torpedo bombers onto it I thought I'd fire them and the first one that shot after I just just for fun right they uh, got two uh, <laughs> snuck by, two sixes snuck by. 
Next one rolled three straight six, just boom, six, six. <laughs> so yeah, just mean. Uh, meanwhile, these two uh, decided that they were gonna exit the war. These are a couple more vowels. So we're kind of targeting with the Americans, we're targeting the dive bombers, but the torpedo bombers were the ones that got all the hits on the Atlanta. So we may have to change tactics a little bit. And uh, yeah, they, they both have an armor of five, so it's one or the other, even Steven. So the Atlanta goes over here, it's gone. So one less ship for the Americans, just due to air attack. So we'll see if that is telling as the game goes on. We have uh, lots of game to play yet, but I know the aircraft can sometimes just find, find a torpedo and sneak it through. Well, this time all these planes can now come back in, so the Japanese might be a little hard-pressed. They are now down three of their dive bombers, but still have all their air cover. And uh, very healthy ships, of course. Except for the Yamashiro. Took three straight hits here from bombs. So they are... Uh, she's, she's smoking a little bit right now. She's got five hull points, so she's down to two. So, we'll see if she can survive this next one here. It's a 43 point ship as opposed to the Atlanta at 12, so that would be a big hit on the Japanese. But these big guns are getting closer folks, closer and closer. Won't be long now before they start to open up and the Japanese definitely have the advantage in the big guns. But remember, they need to get these boats all the way to Midway. And that's gonna start happening in not too long a time. Here we go. All right, so I haven't done the next turn. I just want to clarify uh, what the rules are here because I think I may have forgotten to mention something, but we'll see. So, uh, essentially, the Kenai Maru, one of them, at least one has to survive enough to dock, which means to get within four inches of the island of Midway. The only time they can begin moving is once the Japanese come in and sink all the big guns just trying to sink. So if they sink all the capital ships, like the battleships, all right, so there's four battleships and a cruiser. If they sink all four battleships, then the planes can then go after, after the Kenai Maru because then obviously it's obviously what's, what's going on, okay? So Japanese can't just focus on the battle wagons and then pick off the carriers. That was the thing I, I meant to say. So if the battle wagons are all sunk and the carriers still live, the planes from Midway as well as the carriers can come and sink the Kenai Maru, which they move so slowly, uh, they'd be pretty easy pickings unless there's still some air cover left. And by then, who knows, there might not be. All right, so we're going to do our next round shortly. And we'll see if the Americans can continue to put the pressure on some of these older boats. Have some fun. All right, well, the Americans, unfortunately, well, they lost another Devastator this round, and uh, that hurts. But because they could scramble everything off the ground this time, because it was turn three, and from their carriers, oh my, did we ever get a lot of hits. We got a lot of hits. We left the Yamashiro alone because its armor is eight, and I figured the big guns are probably a better thing to do. So we went after the carrier, and that's where we lost the Devastator because, of course, lots of anti-aircraft and lots of, uh, of the Zeeks were put in there to uh, protect her. Uh, but to no avail, the Soryu is at the bottom of the ocean. She's gone. She only has four hull points, and she took five hits. One from a bomb, two from torpedoes. And not only that, but the Akagi got a couple of hits. So the American air power was very effective. And uh, not so much for the Japanese. So the Japanese are, might be having to rely a little bit more on their big guns, which are getting closer. They're just about in range. But they were able to damage the Iowa. So the extended range 5 uh, does not work. Uh, on the Iowa like that's that's range right that's some pretty cool range unfortunately the mighty Mo also has extended range five so if you're wondering what that looks like for four inches is zero 
8 inches is 1, 12 inches is 2, 16 inches is 3, and 20 inches is 4, so 24 inches is 5. That's 2 feet. So we are just, we're going to be in range for the, for the Mighty Mo to uh, send off a salvo here. And on the other side, does anyone have extended range 5? Nope, but the Yamato and the Musashi have extended range 4. So they really want to close the gap here before they start receiving hits. Because you only have extended range as long as you aren't destroyed, or uh, in a damaged. So we're going to add... The Soryu to the pile here. She's gone. And uh, we'll take away these damage markers. So, it's getting real, folks. Here we go. Imagine if the Battle of Midway had actually had this. I think that might have been a bit easier for the Japanese to, to win. Because they had brought uh, quite a number of heavy, heavy ships to the area. They just obviously never ever got uh, into the fight. Now, who knows, maybe those heavy ships would have been sunk as well, maybe the carriers would have escaped and it would have been a very different Pacific War. But, uh, you know, so far in our little tilt, uh, American air power seems to be uh, getting full measure. So, off to the next round, folks. We'll see if the Mighty Mo can plant a few shells into the Yamato or the Musashi, or maybe another carrier. All right, here we go. Okay, well, both sides lost some aircraft this turn, and some more hits got landed on the ships. We're going to start with the Japanese over here. They've left the Yamashiro alone, mainly because the armor's at an 8. Uh, got some lucky shots in, but that's, that's tough to get through. Um, you know, torpedoes are kind of cool, because the 6, you know, throws a couple in there. It, uh, it does have torpedo defense 1, though, so. Uh, over here... Uh, I don't think any new damage is on there, but finally went after the carrier, and that's where we lost one of the uh, Devastators, was going after the carrier. And that's what happens, right? When you load up, you, you tend, to, tend to lose planes, because then they concentrate their anti-air def uh, defense around there. The mighty Yamato took one hit from... Yeah, you guessed it, the Mighty Mo. So the Iowa with four damage on it, and then the Missouri has one damage on it. So it was a pretty pretty good round for the, uh, the Japanese. They also got a single hit on the Boise, and they were actually only one hit off of an insta-kill. They got nine on uh, nine hits. And that was from way over here, the Miyoko on the far right flank. Rolled uh, seven dice and got uh, four sixes and a five or something like that. Four sixes and a four. So, yeah. So that was narrowly avoided uh, catastrophe for the Boise. So you can see that once we get these big guns going though, that's when ships really start to really start to fall apart. Again, the Japanese definitely have the advantage in on the seas firepower. Um, but they really need to get rid of these uh, capital ships in order to get uh, these guys safely there. All right, so more planes died. What will next turn look like? Well, welcome to the Wild West, folks. We had three more planes fall out of the sky and uh, two American, one Japanese. But the last Japanese attack was from the great battleship Musashi that rolled 15 dice at the USS Washington. And if you count them up, this was, this was the hit. So we got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And if we look at the USS Washington, oops, sorry for the shadow, folks. Vital armor, 14, kaboom. All right, so the Washington has been sunk, but so has the Boise. Yes, it was a Boise day on the seas. That's really, really bad. That's how I roll. And then over here, the Mighty Mo took another, I think, two rounds this turn. Two shots into the hull. But unfortunately, the Iowa has met her match. Uh, she received a ton of airplanes at her and some more torpedoes landed. And there you go. 
that is it. So the, the Iowa is gone. The only battleships left now are the Tennessee and the Mighty Mo. And the Mighty Mo uh, is halfway through. You can only take three more shots. And the Tennessee can take four more. On the Japanese side of things, we do have a destroyed Kirishima. Uh, ended up taking a direct blast. This is after I knew that the Iowa was dead. So I said, well, let's see if we can't kill something. And we know we can't likely kill the Yamato. So we took a shot at this and we actually got more than the Vital Armor on the Kirishima of 12. I think we got like 16 or something, which oddly enough... Uh, would actually have sunk the Yamato. So, <laughs> so the dying salvo. Also though, the Akagi has gone down in flames. This is all from air power. You can see that the uh, aircraft carriers have backed up quite a ways. So they're out of the range of the heavy guns, but obviously not out of the range of the aircraft. And some bombs uh, slammed into her and she is now adrift and burning. The Yamato took one more hit. This was from the Mighty Mo. And uh, over here we have the Miyoko. Took a direct hit from the Washington. And Kablamo, one shot kill. Only needed nine for the uh, Vital Armor. And uh, the Mighty Mo was throwing 14 dice and got a few sixes in that. So, so some widespread destruction. The Japanese are down to two carriers. Uh, the um, Zuikaku is two damage in, and the Shokaku is one in. So, might not be long for this world. And you can see that a lot of planes now are in the scrapyard. But we're not too far off from the all the capital ships being sunk. So we're going to remove one, two, three ships here from the Americans. They're only going to have two ships left. The Japanese have four battleships left, uh, ready to go. And so they're going to be pouring fire on the Mighty Mo and the Tennessee. And if they sink them this round, then they can go after the carriers. right? And of course, carriers aren't going to last long versus battleships. So they're going to have to run and hide. Um, but then the land-based aircraft, all that the Americans are going to have left to go after these. So it's actually working out pretty well. I have decided to place uh, aircraft here, or pardon me, aircraft, fighters here, along with a bomber, and they're rearming this phase, and I have have nothing but go get them stuff over here. Uh, I've got one fighter squadron, but the rest is dive bombers and torpedo bombers, uh, hoping to uh, take out another carrier uh, before too long. But we might try to sling some torpedoes into Yamato. It's a big boat. Big boat. All right. Very exciting round. Uh, those dice were rocking this round. Tons of sixes. Everybody was rolling lots of sixes. All right. Here we go, folks. The next round. Will the Mighty Mo remain? Actually, I realize I broke my own rules here. You sit on a throne of lies. Because I said I was going to not allow carrier fighters or carrier planes to head all the way to Midway. And so uh, I'm going to set them up as I did at the start, which means that we're going to have some dive bombers and torpedo bombers here. And I left all, I had all the fighters uh, on the carriers. So now I need to bring, I believe it's another dive bomber back because I had, since I have lots of the, uh, Dauntlesses. We're going to bring them back over here. All right, so that's what we have. So it's mostly fighters that are going this turn. Everybody else is rearming. So we got four fighters, and then we've got four, well, two dive bombers, two torpedo bombers. And these devastators, four of them have been wiped out. We just got one left. It's because their armor is really thin at a four, right? Everybody else is at a five or a six. So yeah, they're easy pickings. All right, on to the next round. Kaboom. Well, after all the carnage of the last three, four rounds, hardly anything happened this turn. Uh, no planes got shot down. Some got aborted, but none got shot down. Uh, the Mighty Mo did not take a single hit. Had three shots from battleships, and they all got less than the required 
a nine. They got eight, seven, and six, or eight, seven, and seven, or something. So no hits on them. And uh, so that was a glorious thing. You can also see how she moved away because we knew that the heavy guns were out there, and it took a couple of dice off, but uh, yeah, every little bit helps. Uh, the carriers over here took no damage. Again, they both have two damage on them. And so, or maybe they took one on the Shokaku. Maybe one on the Shokaku. Uh, but that was very anemic round. Not a lot going on there. But, that just means we're up for something big. So hold on to your butts. Well, uh, one Japanese plane got shot down, but uh, I just took it out of the way because... It's nothing had anywhere to land this turn, that's right. We ended up getting four damage on both the Japanese carriers just by swarming them with aircraft. And uh, that is it. So all the Japanese planes have been removed from combat. And uh, they didn't do too well this turn. They didn't shoot anything down. And uh, they didn't deliver any hits on the American boats. So the Japanese uh, air wing has been fairly, hmm, what's the word, wussy. Why don't you use your thesaurus? Um, so, here we got the Yamashiro. Not a uh, real heavy hitter, but uh, was unable to dent the uh, mighty Mo. But the Yamato took a direct hit from the mighty Mo. 18 damage on one shot. Hull strength, is, vital hull is 16, so that is it for the Yamato. Unfortunately, the Musashi, who has almost identical statistics to the Yamato, uh, is right behind her, and they both ended up uh, shooting here. One got a hit, one did not. So Mighty Mo has four hits on her. Musashi is uh, unscathed at this point, and the Congo is still steaming along at one, uh, or with one damage. Now, the American boats here... Uh, obviously probably getting close to the end of it. I'm moving the carriers further and further away to try to divide up the Japanese boats. And I think this turn, Japanese are going to have to make a decision because they actually have only four things left that, that shoot uh, versus the Americans have two ships plus a couple carriers and eight air wings there. And they got four more on the ground here that are rearming this last turn. They'll be coming in this turn. So, it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen with the Yamato out of the game. Boom. Big loss for the Japanese. Big, big loss. And now it's all up to the Musashi and the Congo and the Yamashiro to get it done and protect their landing forces. Who are really wanting to go here but haven't been able to yet. Will the Americans be able to hold them off? Time will tell. Will the Mighty Mo survive? Doesn't look good, but it might. Well, the Eagles are telling us to take it easy, but that's going to be hard to do with the Mighty Mo at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Yes, it's unfortunate. She put up a good fight, but just too many big guns shooting at her. And the Yamashiro put the first one in, and then the Yamato put the second one. And try as she might, just couldn't take down the Yamato. So now, it's just the Tennessee left versus three Japanese battleships. And these four dive bombers and torpedo bombers. Now, a nice thing about the Avengers is they do get... They're, they're battleship killers, right? So they can use three dice... Or pardon me, four dice for torpedoes. So that's how they snuck uh, snuck one in. But of course, they got the battleship uh, has uh, a torpedo belt on it. So it's tougher to get shots in. Only worth one hit instead of two. So with all the aircraft out for the Japanese, it's kind of a heyday for these. But will it be enough? Especially once the Mighty Mo has fired her final shots. She's gone. He gets to go sit over here, and that is it. All right. Oh, boy. Not looking good for the Americans here. Not looking good at all. 
Well, the turns are going faster because there's not as much stuff out here. And the Yamashiro, unfortunately, took a couple of hits here. One from a bomb drop and actually both from bomb drops. One from the Mitchell, though. Uh, I had mentioned last turn that they were going to be put on, but uh, actually they weren't. It was this turn. So now they are definitely rearming. We're not going to have them back. So the Yamashiro goes to that great harbor in the sky. And the Yamato got one more hit put on it uh, by the Tennessee, who also received a hit uh, from the Yamato. And the, or the Musashi. Yamato's gone. Musashi. Um, but the Congo actually took a shot and missed. Also, they had 11 dice. And again, the carriers continue to move further away, uh, hoping to get enough shots in to sink these bad boys. All right, only one more ship to sink, and the Kenai Maru fleet can begin its journey. But will it be in time? All right, well, I don't know if Loverboy's right, Saying everybody's loving every minute of it, but the Yamato, <laughs> Yamato, Musashi, they both look so similar. But the Musashi took another hit, and the Tennessee took another hit. So Tennessee is one away from being sunk, and the Musashi is one away from being sunk. The aircraft, though, decided to go gang up on the Congo, which was probably a good idea, because they got a couple of hits in on the Congo. So two more hits and the Congo's gone. But the Congo did not want the aircraft carriers to slip away. So decided to go after them. And uh, that seemed to be, well, it drew the aircraft away from the Yamato because one more hit with the Musashi. I don't know why I keep saying that. Probably, again, they just look so similar. All right, so probably the last round for somebody's big boat. And the Musashi definitely has the advantage in dice. And in armor, Tennessee has put on a good show. Good for you, boat. All right. Might as well go for a soda. Nobody hurts, nobody cries, nobody drowns, nobody dies. Well, a lot of people are drowning and dying here in this little simulation. Yes, both of the battleships went at it. And Kablamo, folks, there you go. They are done like dinner. So, the brave Tennessee... Looks like a small boat compared to some of these other ones, but it's a good healthy ship. And the Musashi, head over here. And the aircraft going after the Congo, nothing, they got nothing. So that's where we are right now. The Congo can now attack the carriers. And now the Kenai Maru boats can begin their journey over to Midway. These planes were just used, so that's one plane, one turn you don't have to worry about. So, here we go. We are going to start them moving, see if they can make it all the way across before all four are destroyed. Here we go. All right. Well, the carriers are further and further apart, giving the Congo basically one target to shoot at, and that was at the Yorktown. Got one hit. Yorktown has a vital armor of 10. As does the Enterprise. Oh, this is the Enterprise, pardon me, not the Yorktown. The Yorktown's over there. Uh, so the Enterprise, yeah, got, uh, yeah, one damage on it. It's got four hull points, so it can survive that for a while. And the Yorktown is over here doing its thing. And the Kinamaru, they're out. Here they go. Oh, and the American planes had no effect on the Congo this turn. He aborted one plane, and the other three missed. All right, well, uh, the last Devastator has been destroyed by the Congo, but at a tremendous cost. Yes, the Congo died, thanks to the first shot that the Helldiver actually got off this entire game, because usually it got targeted and aborted, because it gets 11 uh, dice, gets 12 when it's attacking damaged ships, so that one got chased off a lot. <laughs> So the Japanese anti-air actually was pretty good stuff. Uh, it aborted planes almost every single time they shot, uh, but not this time. So, because he decided to target this bad boy uh, just to get rid of those torpedoes. Uh, but over here, we had one of the Douglas bombers come over and take out through a, 
a hail of anti-aircraft fire, three from each boat, and uh, boom, took one out. So they're down to three, and with the Congo gone, it's going to be all the aircraft coming after the Kenai Maru, Maru fleet. Doesn't look good for the Japanese, just like that. Well, things are not looking good for the Japanese. They lost two more here, didn't shoot down any planes. So they're down to one lone transport ship. That's all they have left. Let's see if it survives. It does not survive. Yes, that is it, folks. And of course, this is just a scenario that I threw together. I hadn't play tested or anything. So in the future, I think what I would say is that as soon as all the capital ships have at least one hit on them, then these boats can take off. Of course, when they take off, they can now be targeted, right? So you would probably keep some of the Japanese um, boats back to uh, do more air, anti-air, and you would leave the fighters surrounding these things to shoot down American planes. But the American planes really took a toll on the Japanese fleet, a huge toll. And if the Americans decided to try to target the Kenai Maru fleet, uh, it's highly likely that the main Japanese, uh, uh, the heavy hitters here, would likely have had less trouble getting rid of the American fleet. That is my belief, uh, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this little mock-up of the Battle of Midway, folks. It was fun to do. Took a long time, a few hours for this, not easy. Uh, but it's kind of fun to crack these open and uh, have some fun with these great models. Have a great time. All right, so thanks so much for watching, folks. Hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, hug your loved ones. Thank your friends for playing these wonderful games. And just like with the Americans, may the dice be with you.